remember to pull this. Oh, you gotta make sure you okay. talk right You in. gotta be beside it if you're gonna look at me. Yeah, yeah. okay. But normal talking? Like this guy? Yeah. Welcome to the K and Builders Remodeling Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. Uh oh. Hello, everybody. Wrong microphone, Morgan. Hello, everybody. Let me check. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's on. Give me a second. We're gonna turn them all on. I don't. I maybe this one's just not working. Nope, that's not not working either. Okay. I've turned them all on. Hello, everybody. Okay, now we gotta figure okay. out which one that three. is. Three, it's three. Okay. So that means we turn off two and all of these other ones. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, the other person we wanted to introduce <laughs> is Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, so Joe is with uh, BioGreen. You've heard me talk about Joe for months and years, actually, now. And he is the owner of BioGreen SA. And tell them where they can find you, Joe. Well, we can uh, be found on the web at biogreensa.com. So, what is this? I guess his microphone's not on either. Wow. That is really weird. Thank you for that. <laughs> Michael's coming in to help us We're out. We're having some te technical difficulties today. Now it's. Need Try it, Joe. Okay, there we Michael, go. without fail. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's one, two, and five. Oh, and three and five. Great. You going still on, Morgan? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Now, Joe, tell them how we can find you. <laughs> well, we're on the uh, web at uh, biogreensa.com, or we can be reached by phone at area code 210-421-9522. Great. And so we're going to repeat that for all of you because... I've been bragging about you and uh, what you've done for my lawn, and today we want to get into the specifics of what you do, because I just kind of gloss over a little bit, and you, you'll help us today. And also, we want to remind you that we are taking calls live. We want to talk to Joe or me. <clears throat> really, it's about, about Joe. About BioGreen. It's about BioGreen today. So if you have questions about, you know, your you're trying to do your lawn, you're trying to know what's the best thing to do. This man knows it, he does it every day. He's got crews, he's got connections too. And more importantly, he's he's got the, the nutrients that you in your in your lawn will, will really appreciate for years to come. Sometimes we just need a little help, right, Joe, in the, in the lawn business? <laughs> well, that's right, and you know, the thing about it is, I, I would say jokingly, but uh, if you live in Texas, the only thing our soil is meant to grow is rattlesnakes and cactus. <laughs> so, so if we want anything else, we're going to have to add some nutrients to it and then do the things that we need to do to, to make the, uh, the lawns grow, shrubs grow, or other ornamental plants, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So if you want a natural lawn, just go, go look outside the, the city limits where nobody's done anything and that's what your lawn will look like eventually. That's pretty much right. Which won't be a lawn, right? <laughs> In town we call them weeds. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of weeds and a uh, little brush that grows up and so forth. So we are always constantly trying to beautify the earth. And if you'd like your little piece of the earth beautified, like I've tried to do to my house, and uh, then I, I suggest you talk to Joe. So Joe, tell us, let's start off with what? Uh, fertilizer, is that a good place to start? That's a great place. That's the basics of everything uh, in our business. And uh, I guess the one thing that really makes us different from everybody else and really separates us is that most providers, the big box stores, everybody else that sells fertilizer, are selling just what we call NPK products, which is nothing more than nitrogen, phosphorus, and, and potassium. Well, that's great, and your plants need that. But also, it needs micronutrients. And the thing about our product is not only do we feed the plants, but we also feed the soil. And this becomes important because microbial life is everything in, in uh, growing plants or grass or whatever you're trying to grow. And the microorganisms that survive the soil are actually what help us produce more nutrients. So one of the good things about BioGreen is we've tried to come up with something that we don't have to use as much as nitrogen. Overuse of nitrogen is a killer. We have spots in the ocean where nothing grows, fish are dead, 
and uh, that's because uh, one that's really close to us is the Mississippi Delta. All the excess of fertilizer from farmers and things like that wash their way down into the ocean, and the excess nitrogen creates lots of plant life, which creates lots of uh, oxygen, uses up the oxygen, and, and, and uh, then you're not able to grow any fish or anything like that. So they're called dead wow. spots. If you look them up, you can see it. There's, there's like seven or eight really big dead spots across the world. I'm sure some of us have heard about over fertilizing and, the, and what it does to the oceans, but that's um, that's not something to forget, and y'all take that into consideration when you're when you're absolutely using your formulas. That's right, and that's where the um, micronutrients come into place. Uh, we use about half the nitrogen that is really required, quote unquote, from uh, specialists that say you need so much nitrogen. But well, that is true. If you're not doing anything about the microbial life in the soil then you're basically trying to feed everything steroids, which is nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Well, we're able to cut that nitrogen way down, and, uh, and the microbial life grows and thrives, and that produces all kinds of nutrients, and that's what really helps you. So, so I guess the reverse is true. If you use too much nitrogen, that microbial life goes down. What, what happens when you use too much nitrogen? When you use too much, it actually raises the pH in the soil. pH. Okay. Right, and it does hurt the microbial life some, but what happens when you're when your pH gets too high, is that number one, the plants won't take up any nutrients. It just shuts the plants down. In agriculture, they call it locked up soil. Uh, the other thing, too, to remember is that compaction. I have a lot of people that always ask me about compaction. Do I need to aerate my yard? In most cases, you really don't need to aerate your yard. Uh, if you've done proper nutrients and things like that, you don't need it. Now, we also do um, athletic fields for school districts, things like that. Compaction there is physical, that's different. You do need to do aeration then. But under normal conditions, aeration is not really necessary. We also have a liquid aeration product that we use. Really? Yeah. I haven't and, heard of that. Yeah, it's something new that we've developed. And basically what it does, again, is it reduces the pH of the soil. It feeds the microbial life in the soil. That helps uh, to alleviate compaction. So compaction, is not going to happen if you have enough uh, microbial? Not normally, unless it's one of those things that we're talking about where d when you were building your home or whatever, you had big heavy equipment on it. But physically, yes, you can have compaction. But if you reduce the pH of the soil, you're not gonna have a compaction issue. Because activity is going on. That's part of it, that's exactly right. But the pH being lower is another thing because the pH ra is raised by salts. Salts will make compaction. World War II, how uh, anhydrous ammonia came about. They used to use that when they built runways uh, during World War II. And the reason for it was they'd pour all that uh, ammonia down, and anhydrous ammonia down, which is the basis for nitrogen fertilizer. Wow. And it would make the soil so, so hard, hard. They could use it as a runway. You got it. And they could put wow. their, whatever they want to put on top of black top of the concrete and cement, whatever they want to use. But that was like using road base. That is amazing, and that's what people are putting in their yards, too much of that. That's exactly right. So it's a slow process of getting an airport runway on your yard. That's right. <laughs> and, and another good thing is, you know, when this uh, first happened back in the 40s, early 50s, well, farmers were going crazy because, hey, now we've got a way to raise corn because corn requires a tremendous amount of nitrogen. But what they found was when they used to use, for an example, these are hypothetical numbers, uh, 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre, well, after several years of doing that, the plant wasn't taking up the nutrients anymore. So now they had to use 200. Mm -hmm. So here goes the cycle now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, never ended. And that would create the, the that's why they had to plow and, and things like that to well, alleviate that compaction. I bet you some of y'all are gonna wanna ask questions. So we come back from the break, we wanna open up the phone lines, y'all. It's 737-1200, 737-1200. We'll get you in to talk to Joe, my friend Joe. When we come back, I also wanna ask you about nematodes. But for right now, before we leave, I want to mention Dirk Wallace, who owns The Maze. We know him personally. He's a great guy, really trying to, to take care of all of our clients. And you, if you want to be one of his clients, you can do that by calling 822-2526. And what's the website, Morgan? And where do they get a discount? You can look them up at maids.com slash 211, or you can... Call them at 822-2526 and let them know that Kane and Builder sent you and you'll get $25 off your first clean. All right, and we'll be right back with Joe after the break. 
Fears of a stock market downturn preventing you from investing? You know you need to invest to get better so returns. But you're worried about losing about a lot of money if oh, stocks yeah. fall. That's part of market mission. Squeeze those income, those beneficial income. Because you have good income, you have bad income. Do we ever add them? We can, we don't usually. We find that it's actually better to feed the soil and grow, raise the nematodes, give them, give them an environment that they want to live in. Uh, or you can put them down. But when you put them down, it's a sponge or something, and when you put them out, it's going to kill you. Know how many, it's not consistent. You don't know how many are going to survive. So when you make the environment conducive for growth, you know you can do something. That's what you need, Navaj.com. Morgan, with your sinuses. It's got power to suction to go through. <laughs> it does. It sucks it. It has two, two, and uh, I want to try that. I have a friend that uses it. He says it's great. He's got fat out of it. Well, it must be nice. It creates pressure and suction at the same time. Gross. I think that would be awesome. I don't like doing the ones where you have to lean your head and Nothing good at it. Yeah. Okay. What's it called? Neti pot? Neti pot. Ugh. I don't like them, do you? I won't use it. <laughs> Bonnie is watching. Hi, Bonnie. Lots of people. Brian awesome. and Aja Green, Rosemary Castillo, Oscar Escamilla, and Donna Bernadette. Nice. Burnett, bearded heathen. <laughs> That's a name. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Josh? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, I saw the picture. It wasn't him. Or you should have said Justin. Justin. That's another bearded heathen. <laughs> Bonnie says hi. I'm excited about the change in weather and having a beautiful lawn. You know, that's what I love about Colorado the most. Because I spend a lot of time out here in Colorado. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, wow. The seasons. It's uh, just about the time you get, because winters are long the season up there. Right? It, it, it can start, it can snow anywhere from September to May. And uh, it's just, you start to get tired of the season, and boom, here comes another season. Oh, it's gorgeous. And so it's not like here where summer's the longest Yeah, season. nine months of summer, and then you split the other three seasons up. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I hate it. I no, I, I really, raised here, but. I really, really want to get a, a, a summer vacation home. Because I like everything here except July and August, maybe June, parts of June, parts of, you know, two months pretty much is the only time I need to, that, that I want to get somewhere else. I got almost a 3,000 square foot home up there. No air conditioner. Isn't that nice? Nope, we have air conditioners. Wow. We're at 7,300 feet. Radio. 7,300 awesome. feet, yeah. How many feet? 7,300. On this part of town, you're about 900 here. <laughs> on the south side, southeast side, you're down to 400. Wow. Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Joe and Morgan. Hello, everybody. And so, Joe, you are our man when it comes to the outdoors and making them beautiful <laughs> again. And we are taking calls. If you'd like to talk to Joe yourself about your lawn, maybe questions or problems you've had, he can solve them and give you some good advice or what they would do to take care of those, those issues. And that's 737-1200. And so I want to get into that question that I asked you about nematodes. I bought some last year from uh, Rainbow Gardens. And 
They're not cheap. No, they're not. And guess what? I never, I never used them, so I figured they're dead this year. And and that's the downside to nematodes. I mean, nematode beneficial nematodes. Let's understand that there's lots of different types of nematodes, and uh, beneficial nematodes are the ones you're speaking of. Right. And I didn't want those bad ones. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, you just don't know. You know, you, you buy them in a sponge, you put them in a bucket of water, or whatever, and then you put them out, and you don't know how many are going to survive. Uh, but they are very much uh, needed in our landscapes because they will control grubs for the perfect example they control grubs and so instead How does that of, happen well they eat they're them. invisible on the I can't see them yeah in, in anything and then and then how can they eat a grub well they don't eat the grub they eat the eggs oh, oh okay. so think it's think of how small that is how big is a grub egg real well, tiny? a grub's only an inch so you go from there mm -hmm. so uh, the uh, the nematodes are really beneficial to our soil uh, and that's one thing that we do with our product back to the micronutrients it always comes back to micronutrients in one way or another uh, that feeds all the colonies of microbial life which nematodes are part of and uh, it also feeds all the uh, aerobic bacteria that are in the soils uh, and that's where organics comes into play there as well for example uh, in the fall when we start to get some fungus issues with our yards I don't use a chemical fungicide because the chemical fungicide will affect all of the microbial life. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, so we use an organic that I actually have a friend of mine that, that makes it in Austin, and uh, we use that, and it's fantastic. You can't kill the, the, the microbial life that's in the soil with it. It'll affect the, it'll affect the fungus, and that's about it. So uh, everything that Mother Nature created has a reason. And if we protect all that, then we're going to see everything beneficial without having to throw a lot of chemicals down on it. Yeah, that is just makes so much sense. Hey, what about June bugs? Um, are those bad? That's the daddy of the grubs. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah, and here in San Antonio and in South Texas, the two main grub parents, or whatever you want to call them, adults, are the June bugs and the black Japanese beetle. So that's most of where our grubs come from. So. Are they bad? Yeah, as far as grubs go, but again, if you're on a package that we have for our annual package, uh, we do two applications of an organic insecticide in the late spring and early summer, and that's actually when those the larvae, the grub larvae, start to become adults, and they start to feed, so that's when they're active. So when they're active is when we want to put down the things that we're going to use to, to kill them. That they will eat. Yeah, because if they're just hibernating, like this time of year, I have a lot of people that, you know, say, well, we had grubs last year. Can you put something down for grubs? I can, but it's not going to do any good. But if you wait until May, June, July, we'll wipe them out. Okay. And we'll, we'll keep it uh, safe for you, for your grass. And what about, so, uh, cicadas? Cicadas. Uh, I don't think they really have any kind of damage that they can cause. Uh, they do go in, they bury themselves in the holes. But they, that's just a temporary holding that's spot. Right. For them. That's right. Yeah. That's just where they Hibernate. lay their eggs, and that's where they, they turn into larvae, and then they go through the pupa in the adult stage. Are those so, the loud cheetahs? That's the one. That's, the one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So they're just annoying with how loud they are and how they fly in your hair. Mm -hmm. But they're okay for your grass. <laughs> that's right. I, I don't think there's any harm that they do to grass. I've never heard of it any out. Yeah. And so you just see the little shells. That's yeah. right. The little that's faces right. on the trees when they're trying to get out. That's, that's, right. that's mm -hmm. right. Well, we gotta have that. That's a South Texas thing. I'm glad that they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's you know one reason uh, that we need to look at the annual package that we do because number one, back to the fertilization, your fertilization needs change throughout the year. Uh, when you get into the hot months, nitrogen is not really required because the plants aren't going to process the nitrogen anyhow. Oh, so really? that's when you really want to put the microbial, I mean the uh, micronutrients down. So this time of year, we're putting a little bit more nitrogen than we normally do, along with our micronutrients. But when it gets into the hotter, we dial back the nitrogen a little bit and put more micronutrients in it. In the fall, we do the same thing. The last one, we put a little bit more nitrogen in it. Uh, our products all have a 50-50, which is an immediate release and slow release. So that puts your grass to bed so it gets nutrients in the soil. So when spring comes around, it's ready to go. So it's really important that you do an annual package because that way you can get everything throughout the whole year that the landscape is going to need. It doesn't work to force feed it all at one time. doesn't do any good at all. And that's kind of what people are doing, right, when they're doing it themselves? 
<laughs> yeah, kind of. And there again, we're back to the old MPK product, and that's pretty much what everybody can buy. A lot of the providers are now starting to add a microbial, uh, I mean, a micronutrient package that they have available if they pay extra to have it put down. And with our product, we don't. Uh, that's all part of it. We don't. Uh, we don't charge anything extra for that. Um, it's uh, it's just a blend that we've been working out for the last 20 years that we've been doing this, and we've learned what we have to do to again make Mother Nature's uh, creatures, critters that we have with <laughs> microbial, grow and give them an environment that they can thrive in. Because when we're putting down all these chemicals, all we're doing is wiping those things out. Right. Have, have uh, commercial farmers started to change? They have. Uh, it's, uh, again, back to what we were talking about a little while back, nitrogen is all they want, throwing nitrogen. Now they realize that uh, they have to do things to their soil to amend their soil. Uh, No-till. A lot of farmers are going with no-till now which in the old days, everybody was plowing everything up, your topsoil would blow away. And uh, yeah, no, the, the farmers are getting very, uh, very intelligent to the, the things that our soils need to make them sustainable. And that's really what we're getting down to. When we really just boil it all down, it's all about sustainability. It really is. Yeah. And that's what everybody wants. They, they want to know that they're doing something that works now, but also later. Exactly. You're improving it. You're just not throwing down steroids and letting your grass grow on, on steroids. And most of us were were uh, taught wrong. And so we do what we think works. And, and for some of us, we might think it's a lot easier and that might be the, the quick fix. But if we're taught better, we'll probably do better. I totally agree. I mean, that's what we have to do. We have to learn it, and it goes with everything. We have to make sure that we're not hurting the environment when we're doing things that we want that's aesthetically uh, pleasing to us. Right, and so I think for most of us, you know, we just need to learn about, okay, you can do this a certain way and get long-term results and some quick results. Because I saw quick results with everything you did, and I don't know if people think, well, this is gonna take too long, it's not. It's not, you start seeing results right away when you go with Joe's program. And I'm on that annual program, and I know some of my neighbors saw it, and they got on it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I've got uh, people that I sell to all over the country, and uh, the first thing they tell me is, oh yeah, when I'm going down the street, I can tell which one's in my yard by the color of the grass. You know, it's different. It is different, because everything is healthy, and it's just huge. And what we have done, uh, because there is that organics uh, niche, and organics do take longer. So we've kind of made a hybrid out of it. So when it comes to nitrogen, yes, we're using uh, synthetic nitrogens because you have to. There's really no organic nitrogen except for fish emulsions and stuff like that. They smell, they're expensive. Uh, chicken uh, pellets or turkey pellets or whatever, that was used there for a while. The problem with that is it's in inconsistent. You don't know what kind of nitrogen uh, you're putting down, you don't know how much. Uh, and there are airborne diseases that you can get from that. Mm. So, uh, Which can kill grasses. Kill people. Oh, really? Yeah, there's, uh, wow. yeah, there's all kinds of airborne diseases that you can get from that. But uh, we've kind of uh, made our program a hybrid, I call it. And uh, so we do use chemicals when we need to. And the rest of the time, we're just putting all the uh, organics that we can into it to make things sustainable. All right. Well, thank you very much. We're going to be taking a, a little break for the news, and we're going to talk about irrigation and also some mulching and so forth, some questions. And if y'all have questions, call us at 737-1200. Joe has the answers about your yard and going forward. A great plan, and we'll, we'll look forward to talking to y'all when we get back to the KM Builder Remodeling and Design Show. Radio 1200 WOAI. Don't forget, Elite. Oh, I did, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about the annual program. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? What does the annual program Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. 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 I'm going to use it at the end. Were you talking about Josh Ogbron or Josh yeah. R? Because Robin said it is Josh and she's talking about our employee. It was? <laughs> no, it wasn't. But she, she's just making fun of him. He doesn't have a beard. He has a goatee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> 
Good job, Robin. <laughs> So annual program next. Start on that. This is a monthly payment for. You can pay either by application. Uh huh. Because monthly we don't do it. It's every six to eight week intervals. Oh. So you can pay for it as we do the application, or you can pay for it at the beginning of the service, and we give a ten percent discount for paying uh, at the at beginning. At the beginning. I like how you take care of the weeds. Sunshine for our Monday. Increasing clouds Monday night of a night low 58. And we will see maybe some early showers for Tuesday. I'm Jeff Eno. Two weather channel on San Antonio. This is the weather station. I'm going to spray some herbicide on uh, a couple of areas. Mm. I go around behind my house where the weeds grow. You all go back there. And I've been putting my leaves from my yard in there because it doesn't give me any sun today. And I just run them. I just drop the leaves in there every year. Because it's compost. Yeah, and you know, it, it's an and, alley. and usually at the end of end of a year after I've done it, you know, you, you find about that many leaves in there. Yeah, that's right. They were that thick before. It's good rich dirt there too. Uh -huh. So you could use it for planting yeah. and stuff like that. Mix it into your beds. Yeah. Oh, good for your so if you so you know when you move to your house, if you have a little area that doesn't get any sun and you don't you don't access it like. When we put when we put behind the uh, the storage shed there, oh, yeah, that's if true. we pull that back uh -huh. and we and we leave a little spot, y'all can throw all your leaves in there year after year. That's so much easier than having to pick them up and haul them. And, <laughs> and it'll also give you a rich rich bed of compost. You will. You throw some organic uh, fruit peeling, uh, vegetable peelings. Just make it a throw compost. Them on, yeah, area. throw them on there, and it'll help that all that break down. And stuff. Mm. Well, now that mom is um, is getting into gardening, you know, the, the, the kind of the vegetables, maybe I can get her to start throwing yeah, stuff bring, back there. I'm going to bring you with that, yeah. and you start doing some gardening in high school. I'm going to bring you down with those. Okay. You know, we did, we bought two raised uh, garden wheels, beds. garden beds we made, that you put together, and they're, yeah. they're about like, this long, yeah. uh, this wide, and we're growing uh, vegetables and, uh, yeah. and, and herbs, mostly yeah. uh, peppers. Yeah. I've got chili pekins, serrano, <laughs> and jalapeno on there. Do you know that chili pekins, if you plant them from the seed, it's very difficult to make them grow. Now, if you plant them, you know, if you buy the little plant, you plant it's different. Yeah. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I've been told that the only way that that seed will germinate is if a bird drops drop from it. a bird. I believe it. That's always where you find them. That on fence lines. So it breaks it down enough to, I don't know to what make it, it work. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's the, the, the nitrogen that's in their stool and their feces. Or, or, or are there stomach acids that break the coating off of it or something? No telling. I don't know what it is. I did not know that. Yeah. But that's the way they say it's the, the only way that it grows. Yeah, if you go down fence lines or whatever and the yeah. birds sit, you'll find them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the only place I ever see them in. in, in in the, in the subdivisions. Oh, in the subdivisions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That makes sense. And you know the other thing, other the other thing you see on fence lines all the time, and I hate them, is um, what are those trees? Those junk trees. Arizona hatch. Hackberry. Hackberry. Oh. Oh. Hackberry. It's got a berry, and the birds eat them, and they sit on the fences. The back of the leaf is like sandpaper. Yes, it's got a fuzz <laughs> on the back. Not of it. fuzz. It's actually like a sand. Rough, it's yeah. Rough. And those uh, grow so quick, and they they fall on houses and create terrible, create problems. <laughs> I 
Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. And I am with my friend Joe, and he's a great guy to do business with. If you'd like to do that, I want to give you his number at 421-9522. You've heard me talk about him for years. Mm -hmm. And um, biogreensa.com. That's the website, right? Correct. What are they going <laughs> to find when they go to that website, Joe? Well, they're going to find uh, the products that we use and why we use them. They're going to see uh, a little uh, annual package that we have uh, and that's uh, really well designed. Uh, we do six treatments a year. They're every six to eight week intervals. And uh, as I was saying earlier, almost every treatment is different. And that's because throughout the whole year, different grasses, different temperatures, everything requires something a little different. You can't do the same thing all the time. Well, it's kind of like remodeling. We don't do the exact same thing every time. <laughs> That's right. Project. So, <laughs> so you have um, different grasses will take a different product? Yeah. Uh, for the most part here in San Antonio, everything is the same except for zoysia. Zoysia grasses are a very slow metabolism, so it doesn't require as much nitrogen as uh, Bermuda and St. Augustine does. Uh, but again, because of the micronutrients that we put down, we don't require a lot of, uh, I mean, we don't use a lot of nitrogen in our product anyhow. So it really works out real well for that. Uh, and the annual package that we've been talking about, uh, like I said, consists of six fertilization treatments throughout the year. Uh, we do a pre-emergent weed control in the spring and in the fall. Uh, we do post-emergent weed control throughout the year. So weeds is something you hardly ever will see in your yard. Uh, and then and, and you just and, uh, you have to stay on that. Right? You have to. You absolutely have to. And you have to use every weapon that you have available to you. For example, like I was saying, the, the pre-emergent weed control. Without that, it's almost impossible. You can't do enough post-emergent weed control to control weeds and weed pre-emergents. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the uh, late spring uh, and summer, we do the organic uh, insecticide and uh, for grub primarily for grub and chinch bug control. Uh, then uh, we cut back on the nitrogen during the summer months a little bit. Uh, in the fall, we start to use our organic fungicide and we use it as a preventative, which is another nice thing about organics. You can do that. With chemicals, it's really hard to do that. Uh, but we do uh, a preventative maintenance uh, with two applications, which will help us to control the, the fungus. And if for some reason we do get a little fungus, we go right back in there with the same product and knock it out. And then the last application is uh, what I call putting the, gra the grass to bed. And uh, that's where we go in with a little bit more nitrogen than we've been using, except for the uh, previous spring. And that's so that that nitrogen is in the soil, it's ready to go. So in the springtime, when it's time for everything to wake up, it's got nitrogen and it's got all the micronutrients and it's ready to go. So the, the, the nitrogen's in the soil, but it's attached to the roots or what? Well, no, it's in the soil. It's just attached to the soil molecules. But like I said, it's nitrogen can come in either an immediate release or in a slow release. And mm -hmm. our products all contain a 50-50 blend. So that way, the nitrogen doesn't uh, disappear or dissipate within the first uh, three or four weeks, which is normal. In fact, probably a little bit sooner than that, probably two to three weeks. So the, It's all uh, gone. It's all gone. It, uh, it goes into the air, dissipates into the air. It's used by the plants. Uh, it's, it goes out with rainwater or, or irrigation water or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. So you want it to get down there and stay there until it's ready. That's right, until it can be used. And then also, uh, is there some type of root stimulation that's happening in the fall that, that makes the plants a little bit hardier? Uh, not really root stimulation, although there are some plants that are more for fall than uh, than they are in the spring. But springtime in, in this part of the country is really when it all happens. That's when everything's coming away and blooming and blossoming. And but I've heard that, that like grasses can store nutrients for the so that they're quick, uh, readier to, to really grow fast in the in the spring. To a certain extent, that would be true. Uh, but it's in its normal metabolism, it's going to use it, and it's going to keep trying to take up nutrients throughout the whole growing season as long as it's available. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so with that annual program, do you give like a little uh, tips on you know what you need to do for your yard or anything like that? Yeah, when we go, uh, my technicians are all pretty well educated on everything. 
and uh, they'll know what it needs and mm -hmm. put down whatever it is. We leave a little door hanging behind after you get finished with the service, so it tells you what we did as well as any instructions that you need to follow uh, for watering or maybe watering too much, not enough, when to water. Mm -hmm. That's primarily it. Uh, with our program, I tell my customers, all you have to do is water and mow. If you yeah. water and mow, I'll take care of the rest. Yeah, and by the way, how often should you mow? Uh, that just depends on your grass. Now, what you want to remember is when you cut grass, you never want to remove more than 25% of the grass at one time. So you know when to mow, when you want, you know what height you want it, you know how much you can cut at one time, so that will tell you when you want to cut the grass. Yeah. Uh, here, in the summertime, once a week usually is what you need, because if you let it go further than that, it's going to get too tall, now you're cutting off half of it at one time. Not really good for the plant, because it's going to take a little bit of a shock. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what else? grows whenever the grass is growing. Weeds grow faster. Weeds will grow faster now. <laughs> and we do have two distinctive weed seasons. And we have the fall weeds, the, the cool weather weeds, and then we have the summer weeds, you know. And uh, we'll get those, the spring weeds and fall weeds is what we call them. Here in the summertime, it gets so hot that we don't really have too many weeds. But uh, in the spring and the fall, we have a lot of weeds. And those fall weeds will go all the way through to the spring. Mm -hmm. So that's where the program comes in because we'll be able to attack those weeds so that you don't have any weeds. Because what we don't want is we don't want the weeds competing for the nutrients that you want your grass to have. That's right. And isn't it true that a regular weekly mowing like or whatever you need really helps control those weeds? No doubt. Yeah, if you don't give the weeds a chance to grow up and, and uh, seed, go to seed, that's what you want. You don't want weeds to go to seed. Once they go to seed, now that seed gets into your soil. If you didn't use a pre-emergent, here it comes. And uh, that's basically the, uh, the reason that you do want to continually mow, because you will, without having to use any kind of chemicals, you will get a good handle on those weeds. Mm -hmm. and, you, and since weeds grow so fast, you kind of shock them even more by cutting them off every time. You would think that, but I think a weed just really doesn't care. <laughs> it wants to be more than nothing else. But I mean, a lot of times the, <laughs> the part that gets the chlorophyll, the leaves, is up at the top and trying to over grow over the grass and you cut it down and it doesn't have any unlike grass it can still have a leafy part of it the weed that's, has a stalk that's true and then your grass will also get thicker so it's your grass getting thicker helps you do that with the with kind the of shades of that that's weed right. That's right. rather than the weed shading the grass that's, that's right. what i've noticed that's um, right and so some of them almost like go dormant if you keep them cut down really good that's exactly right because the whole purpose of a plant is to grow up seed and make new plants mm -hmm. so when you keep them cut and they can't go to seed then they don't really have a desire to live right well that's good we love it when weeds have no desire to live <laughs> i want to talk to you about irrigation when we come back but i want to take we're going to have to take a break i want to mention someone else that can help beautify your lawn don't worry joe he's not a competitor <laughs> he, he does lighting after you get your lawn looking beautiful and you know, and your trees trimmed to where your beautiful grass grow. And by the way, that was the first thing Joe told me. You don't have enough light on your on your grass. And he meant the natural light, of course. <laughs> so we did that and the, trimmed the trees. Well, then I wanted them to be illuminated because they look so beautiful now. And that's where I called Sean at Elite Lighting Designs. And you can have your trees uplit, your house uplit, your fences uplit, your gardens uplit, and you can just do anything with Elite Lighting Designs. Call them at 573-0594. Sean is an incredible businessman. 210-573-0594. Or look them up at EliteLightingDesigns.com. And we'll be right back with Joe Caccino from BioGreen after we get back. Start the new year out right in a new Mazda from World Car. I also do lighting. Really? Oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Are you, are you trying to expand that? Do a lot of it? Or you do a little? Or I like to because it's great. And, uh, I don't do a whole lot. I'm just glad to do it. Oh, man, we didn't know that. Uh, where do you want the title to be today? Bio Green. Just yeah. Bio Green? Bio Green. Thank you. Uh, remember you keep saying who he is because people were asking, like, who is it? And I'm like, I don't know. It's Joe. Okay. <laughs> so just remember to keep... Same first name, last name in his, in his business. And okay. okay, appreciate it. It shows people are interested. Yeah. If they're bothered to call the show to ask. Yeah. That's good. Um, 
What kind of lighting? Just like the up lighting in the trees? Up on the face of the house. Uh huh. Do that. Yeah. I just got finished doing one. I'll tell you one. Go ahead. I just got finished doing one last week. And uh, the guy called us. Man, I like these lights so much. I want you to come put more lights in. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, I want all my, all my trees in the backyard lit up. Yep. Because uh, he wanted some, he had some scraggly ass uh, oak trees. And he said, my wife wants us to put lights in. I said, what do you don't want to waste your money on lights with these trees. <laughs> Look, you got this nice mot, oak mod over here with all these beautiful trees. Let's light up a few of those. He said, all right. So I put three lights over there, and now he's ate up with the lights. He yeah, loves I love mine, too. I do. They're awesome. Man, it makes a difference at night. Oh, it does. Yeah. Well, uh... Yeah, we've been doing lighting for three or four years now. Awesome. But I heard... Yeah, that's nice. I heard it on the show last week that you were advertised for that. I said, oh, I got to tell you. I do like yes. it. Yes. Yeah, he did this for me a year and a half ago. Well, I know it's a tape. He has a nice technique. These guys do a uh, a straight shovel, and they get a, and they and for all their trenching in the yard, they slice, lift, yep. lay the grass in, and push it right back down. Yep. Now here's here's the thing that I noticed when they did that, all that grass grew up faster than the rest of my grass. Really? Yes, it was all more. Uh, getting more more nutrients and more more Air. water. Air. And I'm like, okay, that must mean I need my yard aerated. If that, that thought that was a sign that I'm not getting enough, because I mean that whole pathway just grew way better than the rest. So the next application has liquid aeration in it. Okay. I do that. The first application is really designed for weeds. Getting rid of the weeds. That's uh -huh. that's, what, that's what we go after. We go after getting weeds because that's what people care about. They want to see no weeds. They don't care what that grass looks like. They want they want no weeds. How much time we got? We're almost done. We'll be done in uh, uh, before I three the break. Oh, the break. Go ahead. It's probably a minute. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. How about that place you're going to go to? Welcome back to the K Builders Remodeling Design Show, with, and we're here with Morgan and me and Joe Caccino. He's from BioGreen, and he has the program that you want like I did. And I'm so glad I met you a couple years ago at the Home and Garden Show. And that is, um, again, BioGreenSA.com is his number. I mean, this is the <laughs> website. Go check it out. And your number, Joe? 210-421-9522. Yeah. And so and you can always contact me. I'll always tell you about Joe and his nice company. And he, he has a wonderful annual program. Did we need to cover anything else about that annual program? No, that's about it. Uh, it's just, uh, like I said, six applications throughout the year, weeks at six to eight week intervals. And uh, you get everything you need. You don't, you'll never need to do anything else to your yard except for water and mow. That's yep. it. And if you that's sign it. up for the annual program and pay all at once, you get a 10% discount, right? That is right, Morgan. Yeah, you've been listening. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And so that's what we do. And I know that if you do your lawn, people are going to ask you or compliment you like they do mine. I, I really enjoy people walking by in the neighborhood and saying, you have such a nice lawn. And, and I take all the credit. <laughs> if they live next to me, I, I've actually told them, you know, many of them, that, hey, if you want to know who, who does my program, because it, my, my lawn was suffering so much. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I know you've gotten some of my neighbors already. Yeah. Yeah, and I do appreciate that. And like you said, you know, when you see the, the results, it's uh, it's really easy to, to make a good decision. It is. And and I like the fact that, you know, all I have to do is cut and mow. And I don't have to worry about going and buying fertilizers or did I put too much or, or trying to research it. Um, you know, I used to try different products. I'd try some of the liquids and some of the 
the spreadables and some of the natural, the the biodegradable, I mean, the uh, organic and stuff. But, you know, you just don't really know what you're doing, if you're doing the right amounts, the wrong time. And all it takes is to be busy and you miss a good window. That's exactly right. Uh, and you do have just saw small windows in some cases. Grubs, for example, if you don't treat them within that 60-day period, uh, you're going to have a lot of damage done to your grass. Yeah. And, you know, you, and that's something that we would forget. It's not in, the, in our um, psyche to say, oh, I need to go get grubs taken care of. They're invisible. You don't even see them. You don't think about it. It's, it's something happening beneath your feet, and you wouldn't know. That's right. You don't know until it's too late. So your grass starts going away, and then you've got an infestation, and then it's going to be, you know, two, three months before it's, it's, uh, it's able to come back, especially with St. Augustine. Yeah, it's sensitive, isn't it? Yeah, and the roots are real shallow, so it's, you know, it, it, it takes a while. What do they do? Eat those roots? That's right. They're so so nice and watery and chewy. I guess I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they're watery because if you ever pull a piece out, it you can get the juice out of That's it. That's right. That's chewing right. on it, yeah. But um, so, what about mulching and composting? Um, is mulching good for grass? Mulching is good for grass. Uh, it just again depends on the type of grass that you have. Um, if you have a, a, like a, a Bermuda grass, mulching is very good for that. Uh, St. Augustine? Watch, St. Augustine it is, but you got to watch it because St. Augustine will get a real thick thatch pretty quick. Uh -huh. So you want to just uh, keep an eye on it and make sure that you're not doing too much. You might have to at some point just uh, get your, your uh, bag rid trimmings and, and that way you don't have to worry about any mulch or extra uh, thatching. Well, another thing I like about you is you'll, you know, you'll make recommendations and you can always call Joe if he's on your, you're doing the program with him and say, hey, can you take a look at this or I have a question, you know, and he'll, he'll, he'll go ahead and uh, have the guys meet with you or he'll, he'll call you about it. And I appreciate that him about him. But before we get done with the program today, let's talk a little bit about irrigation. Okay. Irrigation is something that with the way things are in the last 10 years, the heat, everything that's happened, we really need to irrigate uh, because if you use just a regular sprinkler or hand watering or whatever like that, you're not being uh, conscientious of the conservation. Uh, a good irrigation system will give you all the water that you want and not overdo it, and you'll conserve it. Uh, you won't have water running down your sidewalk, running down your driveway, out in the street, and just wasting water. Or and then and then shocking your grass and then trying to overwater it and trying that's, to. That's another good point. And with our water restrictions, when you can only water once a week now, uh, it's really nice to have an system that's able to, to put the water down when you need it. Uh, on the smaller yards, we recommend to people that they water twice. If they're comfortable, you're able to do that. You have one day to water. You can water it once in the morning and water it once in the afternoon. And believe it or not, you get enough water down. Uh, with our products, with our BioGreen, if you get a half an inch of water on your yard, uh, that's enough to really keep your yard looking good. Most uh, recommendations are one inch, so that's half the water. Yeah by having good microbial activity due to the products you're putting down. Again, everyone, he uses a synthetic and an organic. That's right, we've kind of put the two together and used the best of both and uh, have a hybrid, hybrid hoe in that we use that really is really effective. Yeah, well, I, I'm a happy, satisfied, satisfied customer and it's, it's a very reasonable uh, program price. You, you're not having to pay an arm and a leg to get a, a big difference in your yard. And I recommend everybody get it get going now because you're you're gonna you can make a big difference. But if your lawn is in really bad shape, like mine was, it took a year to get it back. But I was happy that because you know you can go three, four, five years playing around with this and see only it going downhill. And that's what was happening with me. It was just going downhill no matter what I tried. But, you know, I'll just say that, you know, even your first advice, you're not getting enough light on your yard, <laughs> was a huge one. I needed somebody to tell me that. Yeah, you know, if you have trees that have overgrown and, and your grass isn't getting any light, well, it can't make any food. And mm -hmm. uh, if it doesn't make any food, it's going to die. And, you know, we, we don't see it the same way our grass sees it. I, I can see. I can see. That's right. You know, <laughs> but it's not getting enough light. That's right. It needs hours of sunlight. You know, it needs mm -hmm. six, eight hours of sunlight. Some of the hybrids, uh, uh, St. Augustine grasses, uh, can live and, and do very well with only two or three hours of light a day. But, but I wasn't getting any. Well, you didn't have that kind of grass either. 
Yeah, so, I had St. Augustine. Yeah, but you didn't have your division. So kind of allows the kind that? I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Their hybrids of the St. Augustine. I got you. Raleigh's normally what they're most common. That's probably what I have. That's yeah. probably what you have. And it needs what, four? It needs probably six to eight. Mm -hmm. Wow. At least yeah. filtered light. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it needs well thank light. you so much, Joe, for being with us today. Sure. You've been very helpful to me, and I know that many others will benefit by calling you or looking you up. And your website is? BioGreenSA.com. That's easy to remember. And your phone number? 210-421-9522. Yeah, look up BioGreenSA.com, or, or you can call us anytime uh, at the offices of KM Builders at 680-5626. But I want to throw out that number one more time for Joe, 421-9522. And we thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at the house, you and the guys, and <laughs> and seeing those little signs on the yard, and I'm looking forward to a beautiful lawn this year. And we look forward to helping you have a beautiful lawn. Yeah, thank you, Joe, and thank you all for listening today. We'll be back next week to the KM Builder Remodeling and Design Show. Have a great weekend.